Hey there, this is Kamal, and in this video, we're gonna carry on with what we were learning in the previous HTML videos. So let's get started. So in the previous video, we have already seen the headings, paragraphs, anchor tags, as well as image tags. So in this video, let's understand how we can create lists. So there are two types of lists that we have inside of HTML. The first one is an ordered list, and the second one is an unordered list. So to create an ordered list, we can type in OL and click on tab and that's going to generate the ordered list tag. And inside of this two tags, we can type in the list item, which is going to be LI. So let's type that out and let's click on tab and that's going to generate a list item. So I can type in list item one. So as you can see here, we have it here. So let's comment this out so that we're able to see what's happening on the screen. Okay, so we have the list item one. Similarly, let's add some more items as well. So we have list item one, two, and three. And since this is an ordered list, we have the numbers at the start of each and every list item. Similarly, we can create unordered list as well. The only difference is that instead of OL, it's gonna be UL. And inside of that, we're gonna have the list item. And since it's an unordered list, there are going to be dots instead of numbers at the start of each and every list item. So apart from lists, we can also create tables inside of HTML. And the way that we can create a table is by first typing in a table tag. So inside of the table tag, we're going to type in a tr, which is going to represent the table row. And inside the table row, we're going to type in the table data, which is going to be td. So it is something like this. So imagine a 2D table and inside the 2D table, we have multiple rows and each and every row is represented using the TR. And inside the TR, we're going to have multiple data items, which is going to be represented using the TD. So let's say it's going to be something like this. So we have name, age and email. Similarly, we're going to have another row which contains the data for these particular columns. So let's copy that and create another row as well. And if I save that, as you can see, we have the table. But the main problem is that we cannot differentiate the heading that is the main column names with the data items. So in order to make that more differentiable, what we can do is that instead of typing in TD, we can type in TH, which is going to make this as a heading element. And if I do that for the remaining two as well, and if I save that, as you can see here, a bold property has been applied to all the column names. So in this way, we can create multiple columns and assign data to each and every column. So the next and the most important tag instead of HTML is the form tag. And to create a form, you can just type in form and click on tab and that's going to generate a form. So let's remove this attribute. We don't need that for now. So we have a form opening tag and a form closing tag. So inside of this form tag, we can create multiple input boxes. And the way that we can create those boxes is by typing in input and click on tab and that's going to generate an input box. So if I save that, and as you can see here, we have an input box and whatever we type in here will be considered to be the input. So one thing that you have to keep in mind is that the input is a self-closing tag. So similar to how we had the image, which was a self-closing tag. Similarly, an input is also a self-closing tag, meaning that it doesn't have a closing tag to it at the end. And one more thing is that the input tag is going to have an attribute called as type, which is going to be by default given as text, meaning that you can type in text inside of this box. So apart from this text input type, we also have some other input types as well. Like we have one called as email wherein the data which is typed is generally the same like we can type in text here as well as here but the main difference between these two input tags is that when the data is being submitted through the form then this email field will only accept data which is of this particular format so this input field will only accept something like this it will not accept something like this so you have to make sure that it has a valid email only then that will be accepted similar to the email we also have another type of input box called as password so now if I type something here, automatically that data is hidden because this is a password field. So apart from the type attribute, we also have something called as placeholder. So if I type that in and let's say I'm going to type in name and if I remove this from here, 
As you can see here, inside this text box, we have something called as name, right? That is being taken from the placeholder attribute that we have here. And if I start typing here, automatically that is going to disappear. So that placeholder is just there, so that it's going to indicate what this text box is being used for. Like let's say I can type in placeholder here. Type your email and that's going to be outputted here. And if I type in something, that's going to disappear. So apart from these types, you also have something called as a checkbox. So if I save that, as you can see here, we have a checkbox inside the HTML page. Similar to a checkbox, we also have a radio button. So if I save that, we also have a radio button. But let's say we have multiple radio buttons. And if I save that, then we have multiple radio buttons. But generally, radio buttons are used so that we're going to select one thing at a time. So if you want to make that happen, what you have to do is that we have to type in another attribute to this called as name. So in that name, you can give out anything you want. So I've given it a name as radio button and I've copied that and given the same thing to the remaining two radio buttons as well. So right now, all of these three radio buttons will function as a single unit. And if I select one radio button, then automatically the other one will be unselected. Okay. In that way, you can create radio buttons as well. So apart from these input tags, you can also create a drop down menu as well. The way that we can do that is by typing in select and inside the select tag, let's first remove this. We don't need those attributes. So inside the select tag, we're going to have something called as option. So inside the option, we're going to type in option one and save that. So as you can see here, we have a drop down through which we can select the options that you want. It's going to be option one, two or three. So in this way, you can select the options and the attributes that you had previously seen will be actually useful when you're trying to link this front end to a back end as well. So we'll get to that later. But for now, you need to understand that this is the basic structure. So the last form element that we're going to see are buttons. So you can create buttons inside of HTML in two ways. The first way is to type in an input tag. And as to the type of that, it's going to be submit. And if I save that, then that's going to give out a submit button and it's going to automatically have a text called a submit query. And whenever I click on this, automatically the data present inside the form will be submitted. Okay. Since we don't have any backend logic to handle all of this, then that data is going to go nowhere. But you need to know that this button is used to submit the data. So this is one way of doing that. The second way is to create the button using the button tag. Okay. So we have something like this. I can type in click me and here you can type in the type as submit. And if I save that, we also have another button called as click me. And if I click on that, then that's going to do the exact same thing. So apart from these tags, we also have a few miscellaneous tags as well. Like, let's say I want to add a bit of space after this table. So there's going to be a bit of space between the table and the form. So as you can see here, even though we have some space inside the HTML, that's not going to be outputted here. If you want to add a white space inside the website as well, you have to type in a BR. So that is also a self closing tag. And if I save that, and as you can see here, there's going to be a bit of space applied here. So you can do the same thing once again. And the space is just going to increase. So similar to having a space, we can also create a horizontal line as well. So you can get that by typing in HR, which is going to be a horizontal rule. And if I save that, then that's going to apply a horizontal line. So these are the basic HTML tags that you need to know in order to get started with building your first HTML website. The only thing that we had left out was the content present inside the head tag. And as I mentioned in the introduction of HTML, all the data which is present inside of the head tag is only seen by the browser and the search engines. So what I mean by that is that this title tag that you have here at the bottom is actually the name of the website that you're seeing at the top of the browser. So in the tab that you're seeing here, you have the document, right? That is the same text that we have inside the title. So let's say I'm going to change it to HTML learning path. And if I save that, as you can see here in the browser, it's going to be changed to HTML learning path. Apart from that, you can also have an icon as well. So the way that you can do that is by typing in a link tag. So it's going to be L I N K and click on tab and it's going to have two attributes. The first one is going to be the relation and the second one is going to be href. So for the relation, it's going to be icon 
since we are uploading an icon. The second one is the location of where this particular image is present. And for this project, what I've done is that I've placed the icon inside the same project directory. And we have two images. The first one is logo.png. The second one is fabicon.ico. So the main thing that you have to remember is that so inside your head for your icons, you can type in the logo directly. So you can give out the logo.png and save that. And that's going to output the logo inside the head part. But this is not recommended. That is because PNGs have a larger file size. So what we can do is that we can convert that to an icon. So you can go to the browser and type in convert PNG to icons, or you can type in fav icon, which are generally what are present inside the head part and you can open any website and you can upload your PNG file and that's going to be converted to an icon and you can place that here and that's going to work just fine. But if you want, you can leave it as a PNG file or a JPG file as well as your wish. So apart from these two, we also have some other tags called as meta tags. So these meta tags are only present to help the search engine or the browser to understand what's present inside the HTML website. So the first one that we have here is meta car set. So it's going to represent the character set that we have present inside the website. So it is UTF-8 by default and that is the English character set. So that's what we have here. Apart from that, we also have two other tags. So these tags are generally present here by default and these are there so that whenever you reduce a screen size, then automatically the data present inside of that will be rescaled up or down based on the device that you're viewing the data on. Like whenever it's a mobile device, the data will be reduced in size and whenever it's a larger screen, the data will be scaled up. So that is what is being done here. So you don't need to remember this. You can just copy this and paste it in every HTML page and that's going to work just fine. And if you use the VS code boilerplate template, then that's going to be present there by default. So apart from these meta tags, we also have some other meta tags, which are important as well. The first one in that is the meta description. So this description is going to define what type of content is present inside this particular page. So this is a page to explain the HTML concepts. Similarly, we also have a meta tag to showcase the keywords as well. So inside of this, you can type in all the keywords which are actually present inside the website. Like let's say it's going to be HTML or it's going to be crash course. So these keywords are there to tag our website content. Apart from these two meta tags, you also have some other meta tags as well, like meta author, which is going to be defining the author of the particular website and some other tags as well. If you want to know more about these meta tags, you can do a quick Google search and you can get all the remaining meta tags. Apart from these meta tags, we also have two more tags which are important. The first one is a link tag, which we had previously used. So as you can see here, whenever I type in link and click on tab, that's going to generate a link with a relation called as style sheet. So this link is actually used to connect to a CSS file. So when we cover the CSS concepts, then you're going to understand the importance of this particular tag. So inside the href, you're going to give the location of where this particular file is present. Like let's say I have a file called as style.css. Then I can give the location of style.css and that's going to apply all the properties present inside the style.css. So apart from this link tag, we also have another tag called as a script tag. So inside the script tag, if you want, you can type in the JavaScript directly and that's going to be applied to the whole page. Or if you want, you can connect to an external JavaScript file as well. You can do that by typing in the source attribute here, which is SRC and give out the file name. Let's say it's going to be main.js. So it's going to be a JavaScript file. So we're going to learn more about this link tag when we cover the CSS concepts and also going to learn more about the script tag when we cover the JavaScript concepts. But you need to know that these are there and these are generally present inside the head section. So these are all the things that you need to know in order to get started with HTML and create your first HTML website. Alright, so before closing this off, I just wanted to say that this video was made in collaboration with Packet Prep. So Packet Prep is a training and placement company located in Hyderabad. And these videos were specifically made for the job guarantee training program that they have going on right now. And that is the full stack Java developer program.
So apart from these free video lectures, they also have some premium content as well like lecture notes, practice and test papers for you to get better at your core concepts. And they also have offline as well as online classes for this program. And they also conduct multiple demo sessions as well. So you can attend any of these demo sessions and understand the things they are teaching as well as the training approach firsthand. So if you're interested, I provided the website link in the description down below. You can go there and check them out. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you have liked what you've seen till now. If you did, then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.